In this video, I'm gonna go through some of the tips and techniques on how to install gas line. Once you understand some of the basic principles, it'll make it a lot easier and shorten your learning curve. If you're just getting started, brand new pipes and brand new fittings will make the job go a lot easier. In this video, we're gonna be installing this backup system for this furnace. This space heater requires no electricity, so if the electricity ever goes out, we'll be able to use this. We're gonna tap off the main trunk of the gas line here. We'll put in this gas valve to make sure that we can shut off the gas to this space heater when it's not in use. Pipe joint compound is a necessity. Its basic job is to lubricate the pipe, so when you use a pipe wrench, you'll be able to get it tighter and when the pipe and the fittings are very tight, they'll seal. The pipe threads are actually tapered, so the tighter you spin the fitting on, the tighter the seal. And you want to make sure that you use pipe joint compound and not Teflon tape. In a lot of places, code will not even allow you to use Teflon tape, even if it's the yellow kind. The compound is definitely a little more messy and this stuff is a little dried out, but it'll still work. I already installed a T-fitting, and I have loosely fit all of my pipe to make sure that I have the right sizes. In order to get the pipes tight, you need two sharp pipe wrenches. If the pipe wrenches are not sharp, it makes the job miserable. You can use a metal file to sharpen the teeth, and that makes the job go a lot better. Pipe wrenches are very effective for this job and it almost acts as a ratchet as you move back and forth to grip the pipe. You can see as the pipe nears the end, it gets a lot tighter. We're gonna add in this gas valve to make sure that we can turn the gas off to the space heater when it's not in use. When you have a brass fitting like this, you'll want to use a crescent wrench instead of a pipe wrench. The teeth on a pipe wrench will chew up the brass fitting. An adjustable wrench is a necessity when you're doing gas line. Orientation of the valve is a little tricky because you have to spin it around and at some point you're gonna have to know where the last turn is. You'll feel it start to get really tight and then you know that you're gonna have to get it around one more time to make sure that the valve is in the right orientation. If at all possible, you don't want to unspin a pipe to get it into the correct orientation. I actually want this pipe a quarter turn more, but I'm gonna wait until the next piece is on. As I spin this piece on, as it gets tighter, the valve will eventually start to turn. Once the pipe gets tighter, then I'll orient the valve in the direction I want it. You want to make sure that your pipes are tight because if they're not, you'll have to go through the entire sequence again to tighten up a pipe. Now that the valve has started to spin, I'll use a crescent wrench to hold it in position and tighten the black pipe. So now I'm going to spin on a 90 degree fitting and I'm going to do it hand tight because I want to make sure that the threads are going in proper. The pipe wrench fits really good around this round bead on the fitting. Sometimes I'll use the pipe wrench around the entire fitting to grab it and pull it around. Getting the fittings tight is the name of the game. Now it is possible to over tighten the fittings and crack them, but usually I don't find this a problem. As it starts to get tighter, I'll put the crescent wrench back onto the valve to make sure that the valve doesn't spin anymore. And now I'm watching the orientation very carefully. Now that the fitting is straight down, I'm gonna test fit this piece, but it's so tight in here, I'm gonna have to do another maneuver to get this other elbow on. You can see no matter what I do, I can't get the wrench in. So I'm gonna take this part back down and I'm gonna put the fitting on before I install it. This is where you have to use the second pipe wrench in order to get them tight. This red pipe wrench is made of cast iron. It's very heavy, 
compared to the silver wrench that is made of aluminum. Both wrenches will work fine, but the aluminum one is a little nicer because it is lighter. The aluminum ones usually cost more, but if you get them at Harbor Freight, they're very economical. The most important thing about a pipe wrench is that it's sharp. That's why I sharpen them up with a file periodically. Now I can get the pipe wrench in there and like a ratchet, move it back and forth until it's tight. It seems like no matter what you do, everything is always in tight quarters because the pipe wrenches are kind of large. You can get smaller ones, but I like the leverage on a size like this. These are half inch gas line and the bigger the pipe, the bigger the wrench. You can see how sharp this pipe wrench is and how well it works. Now I'm gonna orient this very carefully. I'm gonna drill through the stud and use the stud as a support to support okay. this pipe. That way if somebody leans on the pipe, it's not gonna leak. You wanna make sure that your pipes are well supported. That way they can't be moved and start leaking. At the other side of this pipe, I'm gonna put a 90 degree fitting straight down and then I'll put a brass nipple in. That way I can attach the flexible gas line from the space heater. The flexible hose is there so you can service the space heater if you ever need to move it away from the wall. This flexible hose will be inside the wall so it'll be protected from damage. Notice how tight this pipe is. So it takes a lot of creativity to keep it turning. So now we'll put this brass nipple in. Then we'll be attaching this metal flex hose to the brass nipple. So you might be thinking, why didn't I just put the flex hose all the way over and connect it to the furnace? This flex hose is very fragile, and if something fell on it, there could be a leak very easily. A flex hose is so you can pull your stove out or pull your device off the wall. It's not intended to take the place of black pipe. So now that we have everything just about sealed up, we'll be able to pressurize the system and check for leaks. Checking for leaks is very important. Until I have the wall in, I'm gonna protect this flex hose with this foam padding just to make sure nothing falls on it and damages it. Now we'll go outside, turn on the gas, and then check for leaks with the soapy water. If there's a leak, you'll see it. It'll just bubble, it'll hiss, it'll be really obvious. Just check everything. Check the hose, check everything. Even if you didn't work on it, check it. Then double check it. Now that everything is double checked, we can test the space heater itself. Now we're going to turn it to pilot light, then we're gonna push and hold the gas button in and you're gonna hear it hiss and it's gonna hiss until you smell gas. It may take three minutes, it may take five minutes just to get all that air out of the system. Once you smell gas, just let the gas dissipate before you try to start the unit. This unit doesn't use any power, so that's why we're using it as a backup. So we'll keep bleeding the gas until the pilot light starts. And there it goes. The pilot light's on, so now we can start everything up. So now if the electricity goes out, we'll have a backup system where we'll at least be able to keep the pipes warm in the house. Well, I hope you found the video useful. And if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.